make a happy face Cause we're gonna stop at a magic place Called the Curio Shop You never know what you might find Guaranteed to blow your mind Pick a brick, a brack, a nifty knick-knack The magic works quick, there's no time to pack Go back in time, travel through history Maybe even solve a mystery Artifacts, treasure maps, special precious stones Colossal fossils, dragon teeth and bones Step right in, this is where it begins The adventures of Elmer and friends The adventures of Elmer and friends Well, hello friend, come on in Welcome to my curio shop My name's Chauncey Let's see now, where did I put that? Oh, here it is I can't wait to see what's inside this old box. I wonder, could it be some old dinosaur bones? Or, or some old, old things from a lost civilization? Or maybe it's a treasure that somebody's forgotten all about. Or maybe it's something magical. Oh, and speaking of magic, there were some young friends of mine in here the other day, and I thought they might like to see a magic canvas. So I sent them back in time to see my good friend, Bob Ross. But Bob wasn't home. Or was he? Bob! Bob here. Bob. Hello, Bob. We're here. Where is he? Here's a magic canvas. And this looks like a new painting. Oh, look. I wish we could go there sometime. Where, Samantha? There, to that neat little cabin. You mean actually go to that cabin? Cool. Hey, maybe Bob will take us there. Yeah, but where is he? Hey, kids. Bob! How is everyone today? I'm all okay. right. Let's see. We got Chris, Samantha, and Jared. Where is Molly? Here I am. Hey, Molly. It's good to see you. Thanks, Bob. I'm glad to see you, too. What are you doing in there, Bob? I was just reading a good old-fashioned storybook. A storybook? Yes, Molly. It's one I borrowed from the miner's cabin. The cabin in your new painting? Yep, it's where old Walter used to live. And this was his book. Who was old Walter? He was a miner, Chris. He looked for precious stones, like diamonds and rubies. Wow, did he ever find any diamonds? No one knows for sure. Maybe he found lots of diamonds, but then buried them all. Wow, you mean like buried treasure? Hey, he, it's possible. I'd like to go there and find out. Could we, please, Bob? Yes, could we? Well, the place has been deserted for years, ever since old Walter died. But, okay, why not? Yes! Oh, yes! Wait a minute. How are we going to get there? Same as always, Chris. Just hop aboard the train of your imagination. Yeah, all right. Come on, everyone. Yeah, come on. can do anything. It's true. Create some wings and sail on the wind. I know you can, my friend. the old miner's cabin. Look at this neat lantern. Here's an old time storybook. It looks like the one Bob had. 
Cat of the Night and Other Stories by Charles Bryan. Look at this. It looks like an old letter. What's it say? Let's see. Diamonds and rubies and gems without end. Fabulous riches I never will spend. Diamonds and rubies and gems without end. So he did find treasure. Do you mean old Walter? Yes, he must have found diamonds and rubies like it says here. Of course, and fabulous riches I never will spend must mean he never spent it. He just saved it. Then his treasure is probably all still here, somewhere. Look, there's more writing. Trees of the woodlands, creatures of earth, all know the story of my treasure's worth. I wonder what that means. Maybe we should see if there's anything else in the book. Bob! Hi, everyone. Bob, guess what? Old Walter did find some treasure. It says so in this letter we found. Maybe you can help us figure this out, Bob. Trees of the woodlands, creatures of earth, all know the story of my treasure's worth. What do you think that means? I'll bet the trees and animals knew all about old Walter's treasure. Like it says, but how does that help us? I think you should talk to a tree. Talk to a tree? We don't know any trees. Oh, yes we do. How about the happy little tree? The happy little tree? You mean the one Bob always paints? Yeah, that's a great idea. We could ask him about the diamonds. But where is he? He's in your imagination. But there might be a picture of him in this book. There he is. That's him. It must be. But it's only a drawing. Drawings can't talk. Maybe he just needs a little color. Here, I still have some of Bob's markers he gave me last time. Let's color him in. Oh, you may fade. You still got it made. If you think like the rainbow, you find it worthwhile to paint on a smile wherever you may go. Colors galore, a hundred or more. Red, orange, yellow, Turquoise and blue. Wherever you go, whatever you do, there's nothing quite like you. Now let's bring him to life. Yeah, so we can talk to him and ask him where the treasure is. But how are we going to bring him to life? We need a magic wand or something. Yeah, a magic wand. Wouldn't that be great? Think what all you could do. He's gone. And we didn't even get a chance to give him a name. Elmer. Who said that? The name is Elmer. It's the happy little tree. I always wow. knew he was real. Wow. Hi, Elmer. I'm Molly. My name's Samantha. I'm Chris. And I'm Jared. Well, I'm mighty pleased to meet you, kids. 
Thanks for helping me branch out on my own. <laughs> oh boy, does it feel good to limber up the old timber. Hey, I'll tell you some jokes if you stick around. Get it? Stick? <laughs> hey, do you know where you take squirrels who go crazy? To the nut house! <laughs> By the way, kids, I almost forgot. Thanks for bringing me to life. You're welcome, but we didn't actually, I mean, we just colored in your picture and... Magic happens. Hey, what did the peanut butter say to the bread? I know that one. Stick them up. I've got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ooh. Elmer, I was napping, gently napping. Suddenly I hear this yap, yap, yapping. I say, what's going on? Oh, hi, Edgar. Sorry to wake you up. I was just telling my new friends some jokes. Kids, this is my neighbor, Edgar Allen Crow. Hi, Edgar. Greetings, everyone. Elmer, if it's jokes we're going to do, here's a good one just for you. You? Edgar Allan Crow have a joke for me? This ought to be good. He never cracks a joke. Here's a joke that I adore. Tell me, what's a tuba for? What's a tuba for? A tuba for, oh no! That's a type of lumber which reminds me of saws, you know, and the old chop, chop, chop timber! Two by four, Edgar, that's the scariest thing I've ever heard of. I'll tell you what's a tuba for. Marching music evermore. What's a tuba for? Oh, I get it, a tuba. Marching bands, parades. Standing upon the lawn, I'd rather be seen than sawn. I wish everyone understood. Trees are good for more than wood. When the blazing summer sun turns up the heat, your shady branches can't be beat. The flowers in the autumn brighten up the neighborhood. Trees are good for more than wood. Birds who need a nest, like my limbs the best, singing happily. if you knew anything about the miner who used to live here. You mean old Walter? Nice guy, but I never saw much of him. He was always down in the mine. Sometimes at night, though, he'd come out for a walk and sing a song. Did he ever say anything about what he did with all his diamonds? No, but he always seemed real happy. Happiest human I've ever seen. Sorry I don't know more about the diamonds. What are we gonna do now? The letter said that trees of the woodlands and creatures of earth all know the story of my treasure's fort. So, maybe the animals could tell us. We could ask Edgar. Edgar, do you know of any buried treasure? Heavens yes, young chap, I say. I found treasure just today. Digging down within the ground, grubs and worms, at least a pound. Thanks, Edgar. Uh, maybe we should ask some other animals. But where are we going to find other animals? Animals will usually find you if you have something they buy. You really like some food? Here, animals, time to eat! Calling all furry critters! Dig in, pig out, eat up, chow down. If you've got an appetite, it's time to treat it right. Dine in or eat out.
was fun, but I don't think we learned anything about the treasure from the animals either. Another dead end. Wait, the letter said something about a story. You're right. I'll know the story of my treasure's worth. How about Bob's storybook? Let's check it out. Hello again. It's us again, Bob. Will you read us a story out of this book? I'd be delighted. Chris, if you'll just turn to the first page. Okay. Out of the Night by Charles Bryan. It had been a perfect day, Luke thought, as he rode along with his grandpa on their old horse Buster. Luke, who was nearly nine, was proud that grandpa had wanted him to come along on his weekly trip into town. So now, as Buster carried them homeward, Luke thought of all the exciting things they had seen and done that day. Suddenly, Buster stopped in his tracks. Right there on the trail in front of them was the biggest rattlesnake Luke had ever seen. Whoa, Buster, steady now, said Grandpa. But Buster jumped sideways, and before you could say wild gooseberries, Luke and Grandpa were on the ground. Do you think Buster will come back, Grandpa? Luke asked. Grandpa laughed and said, that old horse won't stop running till he gets to the barn. So they began to walk. A coyote howled somewhere off in the distance. Luke felt a chill in the air. He noticed that the darkness gave strange shapes to the bushes along the roadway. Luke was as brave as any little boy his age, but he couldn't help wondering if perhaps they might be lost. Things sure look different at night, don't they, Grandpa? He said. Grandpa stood still. You see up there? That group of stars is called the Big Dipper. If you follow the curve of the Big Dipper's handle to the two stars on the end, you'll be able to find Polaris, the North Star. Polaris is your friend, Grandpa continued. He is always there, every night, at exactly the same spot in the sky. So if you're ever lost, look up to the sky. Polaris will guide you home. By now, Luke and Grandpa were almost home the smoke of Grandma's fire, laced with the aroma of baking bread, rose peacefully from the chimney. And sure enough, there was Buster, standing patiently by the barn. Just before they went inside, Luke took one last look at the night sky. Gazing at his new friend Polaris, Luke smiled a happy smile. Polaris winked back. That was a good story. Were there any clues about the treasure? Well, the story takes place outside. And most of it happens at night, but I don't think that helps us much. Well, let's go out and talk to Elmer again. Hey, why all the long faces? You guys look like you just found out you caught termites. Oh, oh it makes my bark itch just to think about it. So what's wrong? You're not really termite infested, are you, Chris? No, Elmer, of course not. We were hoping to find old Walter's treasure. Now it's almost dark and we still don't know where to look. Here, this'll cheer you up. What do you say to a monster with two heads? Stumped? Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Elmer, how can you be so happy all the time? How can I be so happy? It's easy. Hit it, Edgar. Here we go again. La 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 tweedle, tweedle dee. La 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 tweedle, tweedle dum. It's not how I look, or if I have a pocketbook full of money. Inside my heart's the special part that makes me me. It's not what I wear, or if I know a billionaire. What? Do I care? Cause here within me's everything I'll ever need. Only one who can be me for all time. I'm the one me. Everything's right, right now, right where I am.
to sing a song? Sure. He was always singing. Do you remember the song? Well, it's been a long time, but the words you were reading earlier reminded me of it. You mean diamonds and rubies and gems without end? Fabulous riches I never will spend? Trees of the woodlands, creatures of earth. Yes, that's it exactly. Diamonds and rubies and gems without end. Fabulous riches I never will spend Trees of the woodlands, creatures of earth All know the story of my treasure's worth The Big Dipper's handle, it curves for a mile Sometimes the moon's face is only a smile the sweet harp of Lyra sings me a song. Faithful Polaris, he guides me along. Angels in heaven wink from the skies, making my heart sing and dazzling my eyes. Though it is gone at the dawn of the day, change it or take it away Add in the planets Venus and Mars Worth beyond measure my treasure of stars Wow! Tiny fell in Walter's diamonds! All the stars are so beautiful! Now we know why old Walter was always so happy. What a perfect treasure! La la la, la 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 la, to widow diddle diddle dum. La 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 la, to widow diddle dum. Next time you visit, pack a trunk. <laughs> Get it? And stay a while. Elmer, it was great meeting you. And you too, Edgar. I say, parting is such sweet sorrow, but we shall meet again upon the morrow. Goodbye, Elmer. Goodbye, Edgar. So long for now, you two. I'll miss you, Elmer. But we'll be back. I know we will. I shall pine away while you're gone, but I'll be seeing you. And like I always say, seeing is better than sawing. <laughs> <laughs>
And that's how my young friends found the treasure of a lifetime. I sure hope they come back soon because I can't wait to show them what I found in this old box. And I hope you'll come back to the curio shop too. Will you do that? Good. God bless. The Adventures of Elmer and Friends Make a happy face Cause we're gonna stop at a magic place Called the Curio Shop You never know what you might find Guaranteed to blow your mind Pick a brick, a brack, a nifty knick-knack The magic works quick, there's no time to pack Go back in time, travel through history Maybe even solve a mystery Artifacts, treasure maps, special precious stones Colossal fossils, dragon teeth and bones Step right in, this is where it begins The adventures of Elmer and friends Artifacts, treasure maps, special precious stones Colossal fossils, dragon teeth and bones Step right in, this is where it begins The adventures of Elmer and friends The adventures of Elmer I'd like to say just thanks for this time today. A chance to share your world along the way. One day soon, our paths may cross again. Until then, God bless, my friend. i